Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. Now, here's your host, Ed Cohen. Hi, this is Ed Cohen, your broadcast host of Global TV Talk Show. This is a service of globalbusinessnews.net. That's our holding company page. We want you to go and visit globalbusinessnews.net. It's free, nothing to buy, nothing to sign. But believe me, we know you're on the site. But you should take a look at globalbusinessnews.net. There's good links. There's good information. And it's all free. And one of my favorite is about how you can eat better, you know, how you can build up your immune system. And so we, we have some uh, science leadership thought on that, beginning with green beans and fish. <laughs> but more on that later. I prefer red wine myself. With us today is a very special guest. We've known each other uh, through business uh, for a number of years, Mr. Craig Riley. Welcome, Craig. Thanks for having me on the show, Ed. Uh, it's really my pleasure, really. So uh, you're based in Dubai, have been there uh, a long time, correct? Yeah, on and off uh, 40 years. Oh, my gosh. So I'm coming to you today from uh, Maui in, uh, in yeah. Hawaii, and uh, it's now uh, 6.09 p.m., and it's getting dark outside. Uh, the trade it's, winds have been howling. Uh, 8.09 and it's getting light outside here. So Yeah, that's great. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the world we live in today uh, with technology and how your company, uh, Baggage Hub, LTD, based in Dubai, uh, how is technology applied? Well, it's everything now, isn't it? Yeah, look, I mean, it, the world is is experiencing, you know, a fourth industrial revolution. You know, we've we got to look at it in that regard. And um, whereas the steam power, the initial industrial revolution took over 100 years to, to implement and go through its sections, uh, uh, the fourth one is not taking that long. Um, if anything, the, right. the current pandemic in the world is actually expediting it to go a lot quicker than it has done before. Um, right. I mean, you, th you even think even a year ago, would you have thought that the mass majority of the working population would be working from home off of the Internet? No. In fact, uh, uh, the beginning in March, mid-March, uh, Paul and I developed the, the talk show idea to replace my in-person live meetings, uh, which all, always yeah. were fun to do, took a lot of work, but we didn't have the audience and the reach that we have now. And it's all due to the Zoom. So uh, otherwise, you and I would never be able to have a conversation over in a meeting format. So we call this the meeting room. And yeah. the, the, the idea is education, conversation, rather than speeches. Um, there's plenty of others who do webinars. We're not one of those. We do talk shows. And yeah. so, yeah, the concept is to have people just exchange ideas the distribution, I want to talk about that for just a second for the benefit of the audience. The distribution of this program is going to go out more than 12 months starting tomorrow uh, worldwide based on our website, globalbusinessnews.net. And I'll send you the, the link for your own posting if you wish. Um, but we're going to base it there. We're going to promote its accessibility. We're going to distribute the direct link to this program to uh, lots of people through IAM and uh, Omni and, and just other contacts we have worldwide, Fidi, uh, and others around the world having to do with mobility, talent mobility management. And we're gonna be doing that every month for 10, 12 months as part of our marketing program. This is called Global PR. And we're here strictly to help promote your business, Craig, and to try to network with people. Our program is always free registration. We are supported by advertisers and we're not asking you to buy anything, but if you choose to, we'll give you a good deal, it's up to you. But the benefit of all that talk that I just did is to explain that the audience is out there not only 
tomorrow morning, <laughs> my tomorrow morning, but also a year from now. Yeah. And so the value of the information that we're going to exchange for the next 20 minutes or so will be valid and applicable a year from now in corners of the world. So let me ask you about Baggage Hub uh, LTD. This is a technological approach to uh, help people prepare to ship things, track them, and deliver them properly, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, uh, the origins and the founders of, of Baggage Hub are in the UK, uh, Simon and Daniel Bagley. Um, they're long, long friends of mine. Um, and we had discussed back in 2017 about doing something. Um, and they had gone ahead and, and started their section in the UK. Um, and then they brought me on board in 2019. And we, we started to work in the background on, on getting that up and, and running. Um, and yeah, we've grown 20, I think 28% this year. Um, it just Great. shows that there was a need. Um, and we all have a moving, you know, a moving background logistics. And it, we looked at it in regards as look at it. Moving companies, as, as so many companies have an older matriarch um, that is not so open to technology, but right. the world is still moving that way. Um, right. So we, we thought, how can we make those changes in a moving industry that ostensibly hasn't really changed? Uh, it has advanced in certain areas, whereas we wrote it down on a piece of paper to a, a telex, to a fax, to a computer now, with an email. But uh, ostensibly, nothing has really changed. Um, and whereas moving, you will always have the a personal touch. And at some point, a person will always touch on a client, as in communicate through a call, um, or, you know, have a direct contact through Zoom as we are right now. And obviously, when, when we don't have Zoom, it, it would have a face-to-face. -face. Um, but yeah, everything else is through our technology and it's something that was built in-house and it, it continues to grow. Don't get me wrong. Did we get it right straight off? No, of course not. Nobody does. Um, but we're evolving it. I think uh, that's the key, right? That things change yeah. so fast that you can't just sit there and be like, oh, yeah, I've brought it out. It's all good. No, of course not. We've learned things through trial and error. Um, and we, all I can say is we're getting better. We're adding more features. We're adding more things. So, yeah, it's, uh, it is good. But what we found is about educating the client. Right. Technology is great. But if the client doesn't understand the technology or isn't prepared to learn about it, it's a mute point anyway, right? So it's part of our next evolution is, is that training and, and communicating how the, right. the people can, can learn how to do it, right? So the, uh, the idea of people putting in, in stuff, their valuables yeah. in, in yeah. a box, and they're going to ship it. Whether, like, I'm in, I'm in Hawaii, I'm in California, you're in Dubai. That's all. Yep. If we're going to ship things into the UAE, that's a long trip and a lot of handling. Mm -hmm. So it has to be packed properly, of course. Yes. Uh, right. And so yep. you teach through technology exchange, uh, you teach people how to pack, right? And yep. then you yep. hope that the local service people <laughs> follow through. Yeah. I mean, look, it, there's obviously, there's always two ways, right? You can have you pack it yourself. And if you go onto our website, you can see the packing videos. They show you how to do everything that you need. I to saw do. that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, if you don't want to do it, which many people don't want to, um, our, our network globally will go and do it for you. Obviously there's a cost, right? And, but uh, it's, we've looked at it in a different way. We don't have those massive overhead costs that a lot of moving industry companies do in our in in the world and uh we've cut that back right so we want to make it as fast as streamlined and as easy for the client as possible um we track as as you said already we track the shipment so the the client can go on at any point and see it where it is in the world at each point 
is take a photo is taken so they can see what their their goods look like so they can see you know if there's any damages all those sort of things so again we've taken everything that we've learned over 20 plus years in the movie industry and and made it to a point where we cover every yeah. base yeah so to what extent uh, beyond the short videos that are on your yeah. your site it's a very good site and there's two or three or four videos there um and all very informative. I happen to look briefly um, at them today in prep for this. Um, so to what extent further do you use video as a communication? Yeah, I, I think video is, is key, right, going forward. Um, even myself, I want to learn to do something. I don't know. I'm trying to do something and I don't know how. What do I do? I go to YouTube and have a look and, uh, and see how to work it, right? right? And I think as technology does advance in, in every aspect, people are going to go more to those mediums to, to try and find out how to make things work, right? Gone are the days of the sending out a manual and someone reading through it. You know, what, <laughs> watch a video. The video takes five minutes. Reading it takes 20. You know, it's... Um, I think I was watching a, a, a movie a lot not that long ago and I can't remember the name of it, excuse me about it, but you know, he's, if you want someone to follow the rules, put it on the Nelly video, put it on something, you know, people pay attention. Um, so I think that, you know, we are continuing that and we will continue to bring out new videos. That's again, it's about education. So we're going to continue that aspect in the, what we do. And now a word from our co-sponsors, you know, our programs wouldn't happen without the wonderful support of our advertisers. Here they are. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners, of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. This episode from the Meeting Room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org Porch Light Rental and Destination Services Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs Visit them at porchlightrental.com Cube Monk, featuring the world's first smart cube Track your goods with our advanced GPS system Welcome to the future of moving and relocation at cubemonk.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by heirs.com. 
With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at airs.com. Insured Nomads provides protection and peace of mind with health insurance, travel insurance, group, or tailored insurance for the globally mobile. Visit us at insurednomads.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Hi, my name is Christine. I'm a nurse from the Philippines and I got to know IAS through Worldwide Health Staff Solutions. And I want to thank IAS, especially to Matthew for helping me get my car um, stress-free, headache-free. And so I just want to show you the car that I got. So it's a RAV4. XLE 2020. As an expat moving to the USA, relocating is exciting, but it can also be stressful. Getting a car, truck, or SUV for personal transportation is usually a high priority. That's where International Auto Source comes in. We make getting the vehicle you want for your work assignment or academic program easy, so you're ready to drive when you arrive. Our product specialists have helped over 50,000 expatriates with their personal transportation needs, making us the largest international auto retailer in the world. International Auto Source gives you flexible payment options to buy, lease, or rent a vehicle from the world's leading auto brands, arrange financing on a purchase or lease without a U.S. credit history, social security number, or driving record, get full insurance coverage, and get approved easily through our low-rate factory-backed financing programs. And because we're an authorized distributor of the world's leading automotive brands, our no-haggle prices are competitive and the buying experience is hassle-free. We'll even guarantee your new vehicle will be ready the day you arrive. With over 20 years of experience in the global community, we are the vehicle experts for expats. We are International Auto Source. Okay, we're back with Craig Riley with Baggage Hub LTD. Uh, so let's talk about the UAE and the, the Gulf states. Uh, a lot of business going on now, isn't there? Yeah, um, I mean, Dubai is, is a poster child for, for this region's business entities. Um, a, a long time ago, Dubai doesn't realize that they didn't have the oil, so they had to come up with something different. And Sheikh Rashid, uh, Sheikh Mohammed's father, um, was one of the founding members of the United Arab Emirates with Sheikh Zayed and Abu Dhabi. Um, remember, the country's just celebrated its 49th year as a United Arab Emirates, um, and I've been here for 40 of them, so the country's only nine years older. Um, but it, it, it's Dubai didn't have the oil, so they thought, let's go into commerce, tourism, and so on and so forth. And they really just blown past anything you would think. Um, I mean, if you, even if you came here in 2001, so say 20, 20 years, almost 19, 20 years, the change is immense. Um, and I can't see anywhere else in the world. And, you know, I've had very prestigious ability to travel the world quite extensively. Um, I've never seen what this place has done anywhere else. Um, and, I, and I think people do forget that as well. You know, there is some things that they do very, very quickly and very, very well. And some things are still steeped in the history and, and <clears throat> things of, of its yesteryear, right? So in what two generations, they've gone from <clears throat> pearl divers and, and desert dwellers to, to what you see here. Skyscrapers, the tallest in the world, the biggest this, the biggest that. Um, and these have all been done to draw people in for tourism and business. Um, yeah. 
um, and we have hubs in, in the area, and that's what the, the original setup was. You had these hu offshore hubs where you can open up the business and, and own them 100%, because if you wanted to earn, own one on the mainland, you had to have a local sponsor. Um, and in the last, I think, month and a half, they've just got rid of that. So now you can own 100% on the land, on mainland as normal. Uh, so these are all big changes that they're pushing forward. Again, they've been talked about for a long time, but because of the pandemic, it's pushed it a lot further forward. And now it's into, it's into law, which is, makes a massive difference for things going forward. Um, so what, uh, you know, I wanted to jump in and ask you uh, about uh, business. What does business look like, uh, you know, coming out of the pandemic and the vaccinations that are coming uh, eventually? Yeah everywhere so first quarter will be kind of slow but second quarter will probably be a boom yeah look i mean from some of the work that we do uh, we know that the, we have a lot of files that are on hold they've been initiated but uh, right they're on hold waiting for the green light to leave now the thing that is funny is those people have already left. They've already gone home, but their goods are sat here, you know, or, or sat all over the world. It's not just here, right? Uh, um, but companies don't want to take that liability, which is understandable. Uh, you don't want to put anybody in harm's way um, because you're liable for, for the comeback, right? So, uh, yeah, I think once we get the all clear for, for things to happen, yeah, second quarter, it'll, it'll be gangbusters, I think. But... I think what'll be interesting is who's still around uh, um, yeah. as an individual. And I think every company going forward, not just us, but every company going forward has got to look at their supply chain moving forward and who's still around and still has the capacity, which some do and some might not. Yeah. Um, and I think that the future is more about collaboration. Yes. People are going to have to collaborate and no longer look at it in the, well, this is my account. This is, that's not going to work um, going forward. Uh, people are going to try it. You know they are. That's that's just the nature of business. But I think they're going to find very quickly that they're the ones that are going to struggle going forward because they don't have the capacity and the means to do it. Um, and I think technology and collaboration will be key factors to any company's growth or uh, future in, in any industry going forward, not just the movie industry. So... Our last live meetings, just for conversation about how things are different mm -hmm. and how they might be going forward, um, we've done uh, in 2018, 2019, we produced over 50 live meetings uh, across Europe uh, and North America. Yeah. And we play to about uh, a thousand people, uh, you know, spread out across that. Some 100, 200, some 20, 30. Uh, all of them are high quality, uh, and but we never did video and we never did Zoom. Um, and it's so much work went into producing these meetings and cost. And then the, the program just dies, you know, goes away. Mm -hmm. So now we've been doing talk shows with panels, bringing people together through this medium and using the chat thing on the bottom here, uh, you know, exchanging uh, website, LinkedIn pages, and people have made good connections. And, and nobody is spending any money, really, other than a few advertisers mm -hmm. we have, and we're thankfully. And so the, the concept here is that this kind of a meeting will go on forever. But yeah. I think that as people get more comfortable with travel, uh, there'll be a hybrid. There'll be groups of people coming together maybe even a mob scene, I don't know, but certainly smaller groups. And uh, I look forward to producing one of our live meetings with a hybrid mix of video in Dubai area uh, someday, yeah. if not this year, the next. Well, uh, Dubai is always welcome to everybody. You're more than welcome. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I want to uh, zoom in with you for a second about okay. relations uh, your your primary customers are, are movers. No, I mean we have a mixture, right? So the primary mover is obviously anybody that wants to move a small shipment, right? The, a micro ship, um, anything from one to, to sort of five five boxes. 
uh, where we've put up, we're, we're basically an FMCG of a moving company, right? So fast moving consumer goods, but we're fast moving moving goods. Um, so that's what we do. Um, we, there is a niche. It's not just here, it's globally. I think uh, when we were looking at some of the numbers, just in Europe alone, there's 750,000 people that move these small shipments. Wow. And, and 95, 98% of the world's moving industry is not geared up to do it. Right. There are other competitors. Of course there are. But good comp competition breeds innovation and breeds service. And that's, we're happy with that. Um, but... Yeah, it's it's a still a small market and niche area that we have, um, and it's and it's growing, and it, and it will continue to grow. I think, and especially after this pandemic, the globalization of the world still will be there to a point, but it won't be in the same respects. And I think if people do have to travel, it will be only for two to three months for a new business, rather than everything else. Uh, I totally to agree. Go and live I there. totally. So, agree. so yeah. our industry, our business, and our model will actually be more pre prevalent than it has been in the past. Now, don't yeah, get me wrong, I'm no expert, and nobody is, yeah. we don't, nobody knows, we're all... Yeah, much more valuable... Thinking uh, what we can do. Yeah, much more valuable going forward. Uh, because I think, and, and the world might happen, the world of moving relocation might happen that people, uh, transferees are encouraged to not move household goods just go somewhere and get rental furniture. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look at uh, what's the, a nice company to think about, Amazon, right? You want to go into the Amazon model is if you want to grow in Amazon to get, you know, uh, increase your sway in the business to move up in, in the ladder, you have to travel, you have to go to their other their setups. And you're paid locally, right? So that's the other thing that uh, is quite interesting with Amazon. So you wouldn't, if I'm here and I moved to the States, I'd still be on my UAE salary, not my US salary. So it's, it, uh, it's interesting, right? So in that regards, you don't want to take a big house. You can't afford it, right? Um, and people will want to travel and they want to get there for three months and then they want to be there for three months and then there for three months and they've, then they covered the globe in a, in, the, in a year, year and a half. They're back at home base. They're now seen those places. They've experienced it. They've done something that nobody else has done. Um, and therefore giving them that experience for growth, right? So, um, yeah, that's, that's the basis of what we, we put together here. Right. And th those particular people will become much more valuable to the companies if the companies are wise enough to retain them and employ yeah. those skills. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you for being our guest today. Uh, exactly. We have about five, five minutes left. Um, so packing materials, um, are, are, you're into that, just not the carton, but what goes in it, right? Yeah. 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 yeah look, I mean, the packing materials are, are a big, big thing, right? They, 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 uh, you want them to be thin enough that they are easily used. Um, but thick enough to be able to take a bit of a bash here and there and keep the, right. the internal things right. Uh, yeah. So it's always a playoff, right? So you can go for a thicker one or a thinner one. It all depends. Um, we try to obviously mitigate and balance as much as we can uh, with that. But yeah, no, the inside is, is important. And most of our stuff, as you know, is, is through uh, air freight. So that comes with obviously limitations. Um, can't take liquids, can't take cash, can't take, you know, all the sort of relative dangerous goods, the same sort of things that you can't take on a normal plane when you go. Um, but with a few more caveats, obviously, because you're not with the package, so there are a few more little bits and bobs that you can't take with you. But we found that, you know, if the paperwork is, is done right um, and your, the payment is there, then, yeah, we can get any shipment within three to five days anywhere in the world. Um, and we're continuously that's, expanding, you know, uh, US special. is our next one. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, if, if you take a uh, hundred kilos right now with a moving company, don't get me wrong, they do it perfectly. They, they, that's their market. They know what they're doing. Um, 
but 100 kilos in a moving company is going to take 10 to 15 days, seven to 10 days or 15 days, depending on customs and things like that. We're very lucky in our network and the way that we do it through our technology and through our network partners that we can get it there within three to five days. It just depends on making sure everything is ticked and ready to go. Uh, and again, that goes back to educating the client, right? Uh, some clients get upset and they're like, well, why isn't our things there? You know, why aren't our things moving? Well, have you filled out your online part? Have you uploaded your photos, your passport, things like that? Oh, no. Well, as soon as that's done, then we can send it. You know, so it's again, it's just about educating people as well. Well, thank you, Craig Riley. This is great. Okay, so um, when will you be traveling to the U.S.? Well, as soon as I, uh, I think as soon as I've had the shot, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. just as soon. Yeah, yeah. so uh, so Joanne and I are here in, uh, in uh, our family condo in Maui. Uh, we took the test, the COVID mm -hmm. test, and we passed, thankfully. Uh, so they let us come. And, we had, and Alaska Airlines handled everything just right. And the Safe Travel Hawaii questionnaire had to be filled out. Mm -hmm. And uh, all this was super organized, all computerized. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, things are not closed down here um, because uh, th there's a lot of tourists around. Not yeah. like before, but a number of them. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, Hawaii just opened, uh, Maui just opened up again, uh, October 15th. And uh, the place is red hot right now, coming up to the Christmas season. It won't yeah, be yeah. like years past, but there's a lot of activity here. And everybody seems to be practicing uh, safe distance. Well, that's the key, isn't it? I mean, here... Yeah. Well, we're very lucky here. The government is, uh, it was very proactive and, uh, and they did things as best as possibly could be done. Um, you know, we, we have a, a relatively small population of 9.9 .9 million. I think we were almost at 17 million people tested. So we're on the second go round. Uh, and there was a lockdown. Uh, it was pretty strict. But it helped. Um, things are open now, but obviously when you walk around, you move around, you must wear a mask, you must keep social distancing. But if you go to a restaurant, obviously you can sit with you and, and, and three other people on the same table. You can take your mask off and eat and, uh, and stuff like that. Um, as long as you adhere to that, it's manageable. Uh, I agree. I agree. And, yeah. and there are certain people that don't <clears throat> adhere to it. And then issues are our course right um, and here you know you you are reprimanded because of it it's not just a slap on the wrist you are fined heavily and things like that and that's what's kept it at such a low rate um, yeah. which which is is key to to us going forward and especially for uh, the vaccine coming up well thanks again uh first of all let me just say in closing that uh uh, our website, globalbusinessnews.net, uh, was set up in 2003 uh, by a friend of mine who worked as a developer at Intel. So he knew what he was doing. I didn't know anything, <laughs> but I've learned how to do some things. And um, since 2003, Google Analytics has tracked uh, a little over 1 million, uh, 1.2 million reader page views, as they call it. And... Uh, uh, but more interestingly, since uh, mid-March up through last week, Google Analytics has tracked a little over 75,000 uh, audience page views. Uh, and a lot has to do with programs like this that we're doing. And uh, so it's, it's red hot, a lot of eyeballs going forward. We don't suspect that number will drop off at all, maybe even increase as we diversify our programming. So I thank you for doing this, Craig, once again. Pleasure. Uh, people can reach you how? What's your website? www.baggagehub.com or .a for, for the UAE. And yeah, craig.riley at baggagehub.com is my email. All right, that's great. Okay, 
this show will be uh, ready for public viewing uh, within 24 hours. Lovely. And we'll send you the link. And thank you for again, for again being on Global TV Talk Show. Pleasure, Ed. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day, and stay safe.